Patricia Murphy sweeps into action with the vacuum cleaner. We need one in here, actually. Oh, right, Steve. the vacuum cleaner symbolizes the drudgery of housework and since its invention it's been marketed as a vital weapon in the war on dirt nowadays there's a bewildering armory of shapes and sizes to choose from and every year sees apparently more sophisticated models on offer but in fact since its early development the technology of the vacuum cleaner has hardly changed at the turn of the century concerns about the germ carrying effects of dust created a climate ripe for the new invention. But it was the changing role of women which made it more than a novelty. Well, the early ones didn't really have any style. They were just a sort of the combination of the bits that were thrown together. And as servants did the work anyway, that didn't really matter. I think the styling comes in with the housewife taking on the job of keeping the house clean. And as she became, if you like, in charge of her own house, so the vacuum cleaner reflects the efficiency the need to keep dirt at a, at a minimum, to keep dust down, which are all the things that are going to cause harm to children and, and to the household. So it does symbolize increasingly her being her own sort of um, heroine in her own home, really. Was the vacuum cleaner important in reconciling middle-class women to doing their own housework? I think the way that vacuum cleaners were styled certainly helped to make women feel they were in control of their own house and that their work was important and professional, if you like. They, were, they had their own tools for the job, just like their husbands might in, in, in their workshop. So I think in that sense, yes. We took our design expert, Rashid Din, to a typical high street department store. His advice was, buyer beware. The vacuum cleaner was first introduced into the country about 1914. It hasn't really changed at all since then. The basic models have a, a brush, a nozzle, a bag, and a motor. And whether you have an upright or a cylinder, it's basically the same components. Um, the two units that we've got here, basically this is the upright unit, which has an electronically driven uh, motor which drives the brushes at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that allows the brushes to beat the carpet as right. it's cleaning. And it's actually very efficient. It beats as it sweeps, as, as it, it cleans, cleans, as they had used to say. So, <laughs> um, whereas the cylinder hoover basically has a little bit more flexibility because it has the handle with the nozzle on. So therefore you can get underneath the bed, you can get up the stairs, and it's a very efficient model to get into all those nooks and crannies that you need to get into. Now, if the technology hasn't advanced in leaps and bounds, why are there so many different styles around? There are so many different styles because basically manufacturers have to sell more and more vacuum cleaners. And the only way they can do that is to bring out new devices, new images, new styles, which make the old ones obsolete. So therefore you want to go out and buy a new one. So they almost compensate for the lack of development with better styles, better exactly. models. Exactly. They overcompensate by introducing all these kind of gadgets, which basically don't mean very, very much. But when you're actually selling the vacuum cleaner, it actually appeals to the customer. Many of the uh, design stylists that are around the moment are looking to kind of um, link the uh, visual quality of the Hoover with either space age, uh, with green issues, or with car technology. When you talk about gadgetry, what do you mean? Well, for example, on this particular model here, um, this has probably got one of the latest elements, which is to do with the green issues, in that you can actually change the speed of the motor from 250 through to 1100, which is at its maximum. So therefore, it, what it's saying is that this is a green uh, vacuum cleaner. It's actually taking care of issues of uh, energy saving and so forth, sort of uh, technologically, it's an advancement. But most people would probably use it on 1100 or automatic because you want the maximum efficiency. Just how efficient are vacuum cleaners? Even if the bag is only two thirds full, it reduces the efficiency of the machine quite dramatically. And the more dust and dirt that's in there, the, the less efficient the machine is going to be. It's so important to change the bag. Research has suggested that after the first 10 minutes use, efficiency can drop by a staggering 70%. So unless you change your bag, you're only taking the machine for a walk. Also, which magazine warns not to be misled by claims about the power of the suction based on the rated wattage? A bigger motor isn't necessarily more powerful. Now I'm threatening to sweep the boards is the G-Force. According to its inventor, it's a quantum leap in technology. 
Certainly in design magazines, it's inspired the sort of excited prose once penned by Cosmopolitan about the G-spot. But in its tasteful tones of powder pink and lavender, is it any more than a bit of fluff? So in the glamorous world of vacuum cleaners, we're talking about a quantum leap with the G-force, are we? Oh yes, it's the first change since the vacuum cleaner was introduced in 1901. We've got rid of the bag and the filter with a cycling. The problem with a paper bag is that the dust and dirt has to be collected by the bag and the air has to pass through the bag. But of course the first thing that the dust does is go and gravitate straight towards the little holes and block them. Um, our system separates the dirt out of the airstream, so the air that's coming out of the vacuum cleaner is perfectly clean. So it operates like a cyclone? Yes, exactly like a cyclone. It centrifuges the dirt particles out of the airstream against the wall of the vacuum cleaner, and they congregate at the bottom. So it's like, almost like a wall of death at a fairground. Exactly like a wall of death. The tiny little particles suddenly become very, very heavy and get pressed against the wall, and the only way out is in the center. And of course, they can't get there because they're suddenly so heavy. So why is this an improvement over the paper bag? Well because firstly you're cleaning the air much more finely you can pick up any type of particle glass nails and so on a bag can't cope with nails and glass it splits it uh, you don't get this awful clogging that occurs with bags and filters you don't get smell coming out um, and you maintain maximum suction all the time now it's pretty macho technology so when it came to the styling why did you go for such pastel colors well, yes, it is macho technology, and we, we want to express that, and that's why the styling is so expressive of, of a machine, a motorbike, if you like. Um, now, I suppose the logical thing would be to make the machine motorbike colours, but I think then it would have looked far too aggressive, and it seemed much nicer to make the thing in sort of Hollywood boudoir colours, something that, where, where it wouldn't look out of place in the home. So why have you decided to have it see-through? Well, so that everybody can see how the machine works. You know, it, it, it's, it's so different to other machines, and we want them to be able to see that. We want them to be able to see the dirt swirling around and see the, the powerfulness of it. Um, and also, you can, you, if you pick up a jewellery or something, you can see it floating around and pick it up. Now, nobody in their right mind likes vacuuming. Are you trying to make it a more pleasurable experience? Oh, yes, yes. You see... Um, it's such fun to be able to go around and, and do everything much more quickly. That's terribly important. But also uh, to, to be able to use the machine to kind of do things like a conjurer, uh, to have lots of bits on it that you can use. There are lots of nasty things in carpets like radon and mite droppings and all sorts of dust that you can't really see. Uh, and G-Force is attempting to clean those much more finely than existing vacuum cleaners. Now, what's more important to you, the technology or the actual look of the product at the end of the day? Well, I find it so difficult to separate the two functions. Uh, they're both bound up in each other. Uh, but I suppose if I had to choose, uh, I find that very hard. Probably the technology is more important to me. The only problem with all these improvements in technology is the more power you have, the more housework you find to do. In fact, it just goes on and on. Well, I don't know. According to Patricia, I'm out of my mind because I really, really enjoy vacuuming. Happiness to me is a well-vacuumed hall carpet.